Ladies and gentlemen, more than 100 years ago, Sherrington coined the term synergy of muscles. In fact, when we walk or grasp, we need the cooperation of many individual muscles to produce the specific action. More generally, we may say that in synergy, the cooperation is needed of many components to produce specific effects. Biology abounds of many examples of synergy. In morphogenesis, the formation of bodies, we need the cooperation of many individual cells. A simple example which we can observe is stripes on zebras and fish. Evolution requires the action of synergy in a great variety of cases, as will be explained by Yaffe. The human brain with its 100 billion neurons is able to produce perception and action. In society, humans or animals produce collective behavior serving specific purposes. Economy requires a synergy of its components, co for instance, companies. All these individual systems are characterized that they obey the laws of self-organization. That is, there is no external sculpture who prescribes the shape or function of these systems. Furthermore, we are dealing with open systems. Their function or shape is maintained by an in and out flux of energy, matter, and or information. We are dealing here with so-called complex systems that at the microscopic level are composed of many individual parts, elements, components. But at the macroscopic level, these parts produce structures or functions. Synergetics is a field of science that deals with the cooperation producing such structures or functions. And the basic question is here, are there general principles for the generation of such structures or functions? This question is of course far too general, but we could successfully show that it can be answered in many cases, provided we focus our attention on qualitative changes on macroscopic scales. That is, on zo those situations where a new pattern or function appears. Once we pro have such principles, we may use analogies, we may use them going from one system to another one, which allows for a qualitative understanding. But in a number of cases, we have a general mathematical approach with algorithms that allow us to deal with predictions or to give insight into big data. Now there is, of course, a basic problem. Namely, when to start, the question arises, are there typical or, in other words, generic model systems. I was very lucky that 50 years ago I came across a system that allowed us to look into these questions in considerable detail. The system is the laser, a device that produces laser light. Typically, a laser consists of a crystal rod with mirrors mounted at the end faces. The individual atoms are excited by a light source, an energy source, and eventually laser light is produced. Simultaneously, heat also is produced. Now let us look into this process in a little bit more detail. As most of you know, an atom is composed of its nucleus and an electron that runs around on specific orbits. After being excited to a higher orbit, 
the electron will spontaneously go over to the lower orbit where it emits a light wave. It is as if we are throwing a pebble into water. In a lamp, there are of course many individual atoms and they produce individual light waves that are entirely disordered. Strangely enough, in the laser, an entirely new kind of light is emitted, namely a highly ordered light wave. How is this possible? There are two essential processes. The first is so-called stimulated emission of radiation as introduced by Einstein. The following happens. First, a light wave is emitted spontaneously. But then, when it hits an excited atom, this excited atom is stimulated to emit a second wave or in order to amplify the first wave. Then this process is going on and eventually the original wave is amplified. However, as a detailed study shows, there are different kinds of waves that can be emitted. There are waves that oscillate more slowly or waves that oscillate rapidly. And then it turns out that, as one says, winner takes all. This winner is a wave that can be used, the energy sources stored in the excited electrons or atoms more efficiently, or most efficiently. This winner is called in our approach the order parameter. Now the order parameter plays an important role. On the one hand, it characterizes the winning wave. But on the other hand, it has a following effect that we explain by an analogy. Compare the movement of the electrons in an atom, electron here, nucleus here, with the movement of uh, uh, little boats on a lake. Once a wave goes up and down, the little boats must follow it. In the sense, the motion of the electrons on the left-hand side is enslaved by the wave, by the order parameter psi. To be more specific, we can characterize such a wave by its height, psi, its amplitude, and by its wavelength. So that the effect is different depending on the position of the boats or on the electrons in the laser device. At an abstract level, we may say that the displacement of the electrons qj of atom j at a time t is prescribed by a function of the order parameter alone, where the index j depends on the position. And that is the fundamental slaving principle. It tells us the individual single order parameter in the specific case determines the behavior of the individual parts that are many. Now the following happens. On the one hand, as I just said, the light field, the order parameter, enslaves the individual electrons, the parts. But on the other hand, because these electrons are oscillating, they emit a light wave, the light field. So we are dealing here with the effect of circular causality. The order parameter determines the behavior of the parts, but the parts in turn generate the order parameter. That allows us to deal with complex systems at two different levels, at that of the order parameters, if there are many or several, and at the level of the parts. Because the order parameters are in many complex systems far less numerous than the parts, we are dealing with a complexity reduction. The many variables Q are reduced to few order parameters Xi. Or, in other words, the high dimensional dynamics of the system is reduced to a low dimensional. 
and that allows the classification of a number of complex systems using the results of dynamical systems theory. We may speak of fixed points, limit cycles, chaos, and possibly of some other objects. Now going beyond dynamical systems, the order parameters have still another property that requires the taking into account of fluctuations. Actually, in all complex systems, the order parameters are subject to small fluctuations that can be visualized as, say, the kicks of football players at a ball. As we observe quite often, our players kick the ball entirely at random. Now consider here the case of an order parameter xi that is plotted along this axis and it characterizes, it is correct, its behavior is characterized by the behavior of the ball that is pushed around in this valley between two mountains. Here the ball relaxes towards xi equals zero. There is no macroscopic effect. On the other hand, as we have shown, when we come close to the threshold of the laser, then this well, it is deformed, it becomes very flat, and the irregular fluctuations in the irregular kicks drive the ball very far apart. That means we are dealing with a phenomenon well known from conventional phase transition theory. We have critical fluctuations. And because the valley is very flat, the ball slides down very slowly. We are dealing with critical slowing down. And now the important thing is that, well, as we have shown, shown for the first time in the laser, beyond a critical power input, because the critical value alpha, the value is entirely deformed. It gives uh, way to two valleys. And that means we have now a stable amplitude psi and that is the explanation why laser light is coherent. It has a stable amplitude. All our predictions could be verified experimentally great de detail. Now let me come to an ex uh, application. You may say, well, that's nice for the laser, but over the past decades we could develop a theory that, that was applied by ourselves, other people, our students, to many individual parts, individual systems. And I want to illustrate this by the most complex system we know of in the world, the brain. So we applied our approach to two examples in brain dynamics at the phenomenological level and at the um, microscopic level. Let me start with this following picture. Here, an ambiguous picture. You may either see a vase, but then the vase percept vanishes and you perceive two faces. But then this oscillation goes on. Now, in the last century, the psychologist Köhler said this effect is due to saturation of attention. And in Stuttgart, we model this system by uh, two order parameters and two attention parameters. And here, we sh I show you the effect. You see one order parameter goes, is there, then it ev vanishes, another appears, and so on. So this is a nice model showing this oscillation of the perception of ambival ambivalent fig uh, uh, images. And we could show there is excellent uh, agreement with f experimental results by Bozzolino and co-workers. Now, uh, just to show that these concepts work also at the microscopic level, or if you wish, 
at some modeling the microscopic level, we applied it to a pattern recognition for human uh, um, recognition. And we, the model we use is that of the synergetic computer. So we photographed our co-workers, encoded their names by letters, and then we ascribed to each such image an order parameter. Now when an Im part of an image was shown to the computer, several order parameters were called upon, but then because of the laws of synergetics, they competed with each other. One order parameter won and enslaved the whole system, so that's the whole picture where the slaving principle appeared. Another example is provided here. Here you have a noisy image where you hardly can observe a picture, but then the computer could and could identify our lady here. Now, by these simple examples, I wanted to show that our approach using order parameters and the slaving principle allows us to model at least complex systems and the giving rise to uh, the idea that, for instance, the brain undergoes continuously phase transitions. We have applied our approach to many other fields also, starting from physics, where we studied, for instance, pattern formation in fluids, or in chemistry, again, macroscopic patterns like spirals or cell structures or stripes, till society and uh, economy. An example of society that had been, treated, had been treated, for instance, is the occurrence of public opinion that uh, can occur due to competition between science, uh, several different ideas. Or another example, to go to the extreme, is provided by epistemology, where new paradigms play the role of order parameters. They are produced, then they compete with each other, some of them are abandoned, but eventually one new idea, some new concept wins, and then tells the scientists in which way they may proceed with their science. Thank you for your attention.